tend to go in and create from scratch. You know, every day is a, a, a kind of brand new day. I have really no plan when I come to the studio. The process is like not having a process, I guess. Back in 2010, when I started working with Frank Ocean, I couldn't afford any keyboards. So most of the stuff on Channel Orange is done with the Arturia stuff. Sometimes samples just sound a little too perfect, but there's really no character. It's kind of stale. In the digital world, it can seem like that's not right, but in the musical world, that's what I want. I want it to sound like you're in the room with the actual people. The cool thing about Arturia is like it's like a real analog synth in that regard where you can start you know, pulling cutoff filters and you can start changing the waveforms on the oscillators, just like you would on an analog keyboard. With the V Collection, uh, my experiences have had really good luck with, you know, the, the Mini Moog remake. One of my go-tos still is the Oberheim. I have like the real versions, but I'll still sometimes dive into it because there's some pretty cool presets. And all of a sudden you get inspired to go a different direction in your writing or something like that. So I'm going to start with the uh, the Vox. It's kind of like the remake of the old like 60s Continental organ that, you know, I think they call them like reed organs. I think it's, you know, really popular like on, on all the door songs. That's kind of what they're using. So there's this patch called Psychedelic. So come with some cool chords. So I'll lay this down. Okay. Sweet. For me, I always try to manipulate the sound so it's not just like the stock sound. I felt like I kind of wanted to sound a little bit darker and a little more vintage. This is like a stock Pro Tools plug-in, the Spring Reverb, but it sounds in a good way, Rick, really, it sounds really shitty. <laughs> so I use it a lot. It can instantly kind of makes it sound more lo-fi. The sound itself already sounds pretty vintage, but this is taking it even kind of a little more old school. So I'm gonna dive into my pack and uh, see if I can find any like tonal loops or musical stuff. Yeah, th this one I'm using is, uh, it's called Soultron. It's under like the tonal loops. I think I created that using like a bunch of different Mellotron sounds on stacked on top of each other. For me, it's starting to sound like even still a little too clean. So like I'm gonna throw on like a tape emulator plug-in, get some like wobble to it. Since it's such a long note too, maybe like I'll try to pulse it like almost like a side chain. Once again, I'm going to my pack. Um, I'll start looking for some kick sounds. That's cool, perfect. So the kick I'm using right now is the Jumanji kick. I feel like we can make something out of that. So I'm kind of already feeling like I want to have this be almost kind of like a heartbeat, maybe. So I'll do that. A lot of times I'll do that with a, with just some, some delay. I'm going to use this stock Pro Tools one. So let's add another no, another kick. This is fun because we're just no, I'm getting to look through all the stuff too. Cool, this is cool. This one's called uh, it's out of the kick folder, the gulp kick. It seems to be the more we get into this, it seems like I want to keep this like more lo-fi thing going. So I'm gonna look for something that's kind of muffled or oh, how about this one muffled? There you go, boom. <laughs> let's check it out. This is one of my favorite Arturia plugins I use a lot. Uh, it's the Mini Moog. So we use this Culture Vulture. That kind of a preset that I'd made my on my own. Too distorted, let's see. That's cool. Right now the sound is super mono sounding, so I wanna like spread it out. We use this guy. Keeping this lo-fi thing, I feel like it needs some kind of movement, like a hi-hat thing or something. A lot of times I'll try to do something that's not just like so standard. So I'm feeling like I'm like doing something on a guitar. Sweet. 
try like one more ambient sound. I think it might be getting close. We're in a great spot. If I was working on the song, writing it, I feel like hopefully by this point we'd have some melodies going and maybe some song concept ideas. I've actually been using the pack a lot myself because I'm kind of rediscovering old sounds. Just hearing the initial, you know, raw sound is what inspired me to want to grab them in the first place. So that's part of a huge inspiration to create music. Is like, you know, you might hear one thing, you manipulate it, make it your own thing. And no one would have any idea where you got that sound in the first place, which is, I think is incredible. It's like, you know, kind of like the art of sampling.